Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible says in verse 1 of the book of Galatians, and I'm talking to you briefly about how to receive a miracle. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. It says, all foolish Galatians who has bewitched you or who has manipulated you or who has changed your mind. He says that you should not obey the truth before whom, whose eyes Christ has evidently been set forth crucified amongst you. The only thing I will learn of you is this, and this is what he was asking. He says, receive the Spirit by the work of the law or by the hearing of faith. He says, when you receive the Spirit at salvation or you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, how did you receive? Because the background is this. Some teachers, some false teachers had entered into the, into the Galatian church. And they began to tell people like, you know, you can't just think God will do this for you. If God is going to do this for you, you're going to be this person. You're going to do this, do that, keep all the laws of Moses. And that's not what Paul preached. What did Paul preach? Paul preached that God blesses and God loves and blesses because of his kindness. Because of who he is. But this teacher said, no, 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 no. They say, ah, how can you just get hit like that? After all, you're a bad person. After all, you sinned yesterday. How can you just get a financial breakthrough like that? You're not even a titan Christian. He gives you all those reasons why God will not bless you. And the notion is this, you have to work for your miracle. So there's a notion, I have to work for my miracle. So Paul now asks this, he asks a very simple question. He said, let's even talk about the biggest miracle, which is salvation. He said, how did you receive salvation? He says, the, this I want to ask you or learn of you. Receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. That's so powerful. You know, every time I see this, <laughs> someone says, someone asks me one time, say, how do you pay for this kind of meeting? I said, this is how I prepare, by the hearing of faith. Yes. I just start hearing the word. I just start hearing the word. Because the ability of God is in this word. That's what he is. The ability of God is in this word. And Maybe what you need is not healing. Maybe it's a business thing. All you have to do is to hear his word. Either you find Bible promises, and you know the thing you can do? Get Bible promise about your business. All of us have mobile phones. Record it in your voice. And every morning, play it to yourself. Every evening, play it to yourself. If you don't want to do that, get a teaching. I've taught so many teachers on Harvest TV. Anointed, classic messages. You know, I was just thinking, I got a message, you know, just online as I was coming. And, and, and the person said, I, I mean, I got several messages. Someone texted me from Baltimore, just several places, and just about the message. And I said, well, I really think that the, serv the message I preached in the second service today will be one of the best. It's to be a classic that everybody should go back and listen to it. You know, Pastor Faluke was there. She said that, Pastor, that message was deliverance all by itself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Someone says, I need a miracle. He says, do you, are you going to receive it? Because someone said, I need a miracle. I have to do this. No, don't do anything. All you have to do is to hear. So, listen to me. Paul was teaching one time. And the man was lame. He couldn't work. As Paul was teaching, the Bible says, he perceived he had faith. Where did he get the faith from? As he was listening. Your child is sick. When they are sleeping, play the word of God in their room. He says as he was sleeping, the man was impotent in his feet. Paul, the man did not even know he had faith because he's not used to it. The Bible says, and Paul perceiving he has faith, he said, rise up. The Bible says, instantly, his legs receive strength. You must know the word of God contains creative power. What is creative power? Creative power means, number one, what is not there before, God of God can put it there. They say, you have low sperm count. God of God can change it. He can make the sperm move from 20 to 100. Somebody says to you that um, the reason why this is not because one nerve is damaged. It says the word of God can create it. The word of God does not just have healing power. It has creative power. It, it, it creates what it says. Because, because this is what I always tell people. You know, the word of God is so powerful. Creative power. Let me say something to you quickly. And let me say this to you quickly. This is very powerful. How, <laughs> very powerful. How did the rib, well, the Bible says that God removed the rib in Adam and used it to make the woman. Question, how did God remove it? Did God now borrow surgical blades from the doctors to cut Adam and 
he, when he cut him, he was bleeding. He not cleaned it. He not cleaned it. He not cleaned it. Is that God removed it? No. The Bible already told us that God does nothing without his word. All God had to do was to make Adam sleep. And when Adam was sleeping, God just said, Rib, come out. When he said, Rib, come out. The word made the rib. The word can remove it. Someone says, how will you will I be healed of cancer? It's by commanding the cancer to come out. Someone says, how will the deaf ear hear? It's by commanding the deaf ears to be open. You don't understand. The ears were made by the word. The eyes were made by the word. If they were made by the word, they can be corrected, regulated, recreated, sustained by the same word. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, question, how do I receive a miracle? The Bible says, how do you receive a miracle? He said about the works of the Lord because, because this is the works. God, I'm here now. I'm here now. This and this. Look at me. Ah, will I keep suffering like this? Why are you talking about nonsense? This, see, if you want to receive a miracle, the way you prayed, you prayed that way all your life. It has brought you nothing. Change the way you pray. He said, is it about the works of the law? Someone says, God, look at all I've done for you. I should not be in this condition. Oh, wow. Is it about the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Let's continue. I wanted to show you. He says this. Have you begun in the spirit? You know the thing? The, and this is the reason why sometimes it's the older Christians that find it difficult to receive a miracle. You know why? The older Christians have things to boast about. They will tell God, I've been an usher. I'm a theater. I'm this. I'm that. The one that is a sinner that just got in, there's nothing to boast about. So he will just say, God, just have mercy. Listen to me. There's, there's no reason that we should accept a miracle if not for the finished work. The finished and the perfect work of Christ. We are blessed not because of who we are, because of what he has done. Somebody say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. Someone said, what about if it's not my time to be healed? Oh, you did read John chapter 2. Jesus more than wanted wine for the wedding. Not even healing, just wine. Something that trivia. Jesus Christ said, my time has not come. But what happened? Because she asked, the time came. For you to be here, your time has come. I'm telling you because people say, well, well, you know, no, you know, no, maybe your time has come. Maybe your time has not come. Maybe No, your time is now. Because the Bible says, now faith is. Faith is always now. Faith is not tomorrow. Faith is always now. Many of you are going to go back to the hospital tomorrow and the doctor is going to, you're going to, they're going to be blown away. They will be blown away. They will be completely blown away. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's keep reading. Glory to God. He said this, have you begun in the spirit and are you now made perfect by the flesh? He says, when you started, you were believing, you were believing based on God's goodness. You were believing based on God's kindness. He said, but now, You've grown. You want to perfect your miracle in the flesh. He said, no. He said, have you suffered so many things in vain, if yet it be in vain? Then he says something, verse 5. This is what touched me. See what it says. He that ministers to you, the Spirit, and works miracles amongst you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? He said, how are miracles done? He said, because someone says, we're going to now pray. It's not the prayer, it's the gift of God. He said, he that does the miracle. How, listen, it's so simple to receive tonight. All you have to do is that Jesus loves me. He paid the price 2,000 years ago. Therefore, I can carry my baby. And that is it. I mean, just earlier on, you heard some testimonies. You watched some testimonies of the power of God. They, you know, they, they, I mean, not too long ago, I got another testimony from the U.S. of a lady that had a, um, that had a lump, a cancerous lump. During next level prayer, as we're praying, she was in the U.S. watching. She said, as we're praying, he said, I began to feel heat in the side of my breast where the lump was. He said, the other breast was fine. He said, I began to feel the heat. I just said, thank you, Jesus. You're walking on my body. Thank you. You're walking on my body. He said, I went to sleep. He said, the heat intensified. I couldn't sleep, but I tried to sleep. He said, when I woke up in the morning, he said, the lump has shrunk. Not only did the lung shrink, she said, I have to go to the hospital. He said, when I went to the hospital, 
Then I saw all the doctors and the nurses and the, lab, you know, the technicians, they were going up and down, up and down, up and down. Why? Because there was something not different they noticed. He said, as they're going up and down, he said, I was just smiling. He said, they don't know a miracle that happened. <laughs> so they finally came to us and said, something is wrong. He said, yes, I know. That's why I'm here. Confirm what I know. And what had happened was that the cancerous gold had disappeared. Every trace of cancer had gone. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So the question tonight, this is a question tonight, and this is a question tonight. You know, why won't God heal you? God wants you well. See, that's what you must know. The reason why is this. God wants you well. Let, let me, all of you that are healing, God wants you well. God wants you to carry your baby. He knows the joy of carrying the baby. God wants you to live long so that your children can enjoy you. God doesn't want you to become a medical liability to your brothers. God wants you well. He loves you that much. Why should someone be always carrying you and pushing you on the wheelchair and leading you by the walking stick? No, that's not what God wants. God wants to see you walking your child down the aisle, walking majestically. That's what God wants for you. Someone said, you know, how do I know that? Exodus 15, 26, just in case you want to make a mistake. You know what it says? He said, I am the Lord that he led thee. Exodus 15, 26, it says, just in case you're confused, I am the Lord that he led thee. Look at it there. It says, it says, it says, can you bring it to the end? To the end, just to the end of the chapter of the verse. It says, I am the Lord that he led thee. Don't confuse it. I am the Lord. So God wants you well. I love the scripture and look where it says it is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. Question, why does God want you well? Let me explain to you. If you're not well, how will you preach? You don't have the strength to preach. You don't have to set the strength to serve him. How will you fulfill your purpose? All of you that are sick, you must make up your mind today that the reason I will be healed is because I need to fulfill my purpose for God. If you're not well, how would God show other people that he loves you? You know why God does miracles? He loves to show that he loves. That's why sometimes when I see the miracles, the tears flood my eyes because I can believe what the Lord has done. I'm like, this is wonderful. God is gracious. God is good. Glory to God. God wants to do things in your life that all the Egyptians, those that don't know him, will be like, huh? 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 Did that happen? Are you for real? You know, on my birthday, there's this, there's this young boy now. He sent me a video and he said, he said he got healed when he was about five years old. He had bad eyesight. His, his eyesight was so bad at five years, it was, it was using glasses like the bottom of a Coke bottle. That's how bad it was. And he got healed. And when he got healed, you know what he said to me? He said this, he said that, from that moment, I wanted to become a pastor. He said, because God used the pastor to touch my life. That's what God wants to do with you. You need to see it. As I'm talking to you, you need to see your healing. You, the problem that most people always see their sickness, see your healing. Someone says, well, I'm not healing, my, I'm not sick in my body. But come on, you have some business challenges. If God can heal sicknesses, how much more business challenges? The same power of God that heals the sick, prosperous people. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Some people say, say, I want to be healed, but I don't have faith. That's why I'm here for you. You can use my faith. Praise God. Yeah. You can use my faith. So is that possible? The Bible says, I shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. All you have to do is to use my faith. He said, once I touch you or pray for you, you recover. I brought extra faith for you. I knew that some of you don't have faith. So this, I brought extra faith. So if you don't have faith, say praise God. I can use the pastor's faith. So what's your excuse? No excuse. That's no excuse. Just imagine, you know, <laughs> because as I was thinking about this, for you is a faith issue, for me it's a responsibility issue. Because the Lord said to me in the word of God, He said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's not even about the person sick, it's about me. He said, I will do and there will be performance. Are you here? If you don't have faith say, Lord, I just tap into his faith right now. You're watching online, I just tap into his faith right now.
Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Someone says, you, 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 know, you know me, I, I'm, I'm a sinner, God doesn't like me. You know, you know, I'm a terrible person. Pastor, you don't imagine all the things I've done. I still know what I did yesterday. You know, even today, I know the sin I've committed. There's no reason why God will heal me. Have you read Romans 2 verse 4 before? Let me show you Romans chapter 2 verse 4. Look at it quickly. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. Glory to God. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. See, the Bible says this. Despise it out the riches of his goodness and the forbearance of his long suffering, not knowing, let's read together, I want to go, not knowing that what? The good. What leads people to repent that? The anger of God or the goodness of God? God says, you know what? I will heal you despite the fact that you're doing all the wrong things because I want my goodness to lead you to repentance. He said, the goodness of God. Someone says, this sickness, I cost it myself. I I, I didn't know what I did and I got HIV. God says, even though you messed up, I want to show you my goodness. Glory to God. You know, the other day, I I remember when when Pastor Laya was in in Republic of Bene. I don't know if Pastor Laya is somewhere around and he can come forward and I testify to this. You can help me get him if it's possible. You know, I'd come to minister in Republic of Bene and it was a gathering and as I was ministering, the Spirit of God said to me that there was someone that had HIV. And it was predominantly because it was young people. You know, it was challenging for me to believe that someone would have HIV. My knowledge of HIV at that time, I thought once you have HIV, you're like almost dead. I eventually said it, and this young girl came forward. And as I wanted to pray for her, she began to cry. She said, I caused it. He said, I was reckless. I did everything with everybody. He said it was when I went to my began to fall sick. I tested positive. I did confirmatory test positive. I don't know. And she was crying. And I said, but if God is angry at you, why will he tell me who you are? Yes. I said, forget that. Let's pray. We prayed together. I ministered to her. They came to tell me. The girl went back, did a test, did a confirmatory test. The HIV was nil in her blood. Someone says, how is that possible? It's doctors that say things are curable, some things are not curable. With God, all things. 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 Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, with God. All things are possible. Lift those hands up. For one moment, just think of you in your miracle. Listen to what I said. Think of you in your miracle. Maybe you came with a deaf ear, think of you in your miracle. <laughs> Maybe you came with a blind eye, think of you your miracle. Maybe your child is sick, think of you your miracle. Think of you your miracle and see the joy that you have. See the joy that you have. Think of you in miracle. Say, think of you and shouting, God has done it. <laughs> God has done it. Hallelujah. God has done it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Someone says, but I've tried, a lot of people have prayed for me. I've not been healed. That's why you get healed today. Because they've been adding their own anointing, so we'll just crown it up. That's why you, (laughs) you thought it was not working, but it's working actually. Let's read two more scriptures and we'll close the service. First Corinthians, this is why you can afford to be sick. This is why you must know sickness cannot stain your body. Because you can, you can destroy it. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. Let me show you something. I'll show you two scriptures and I will, we, will, we will begin to pray. Oh, glory to God. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. What does it say? <laughs> Paul says, what? Know ye not that what? Your body is what? Uh-huh. And ye are of God and you are not what? Your own. Verse 20. Verse 20, please. You have been bought what? You have been bought what? You have been bought what? <laughs> Pastor, did you come? Bring your phone. Is your phone with you? Yeah. Is this your phone? Yes, did you? Let me give you a microphone. Is this your phone? Yes, sir. Did you buy it? Yes, sir. If someone wants to take it, will you let them take it? No, sir. See, God did not say you are your own. God says, I bought you. Hallelujah. So I say he bought my spirit, but in the context, it wasn't talking about spirit. He was talking about your body. 
God says, I bought your body. All of a sudden, someone wants to come and put sickness there. <laughs> for you, see, for someone to take the phone, he will be stronger than you. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For someone to take the phone, he must be stronger yes, than sir. you. Yes, sir. And there's nobody stronger than our God. Yes. Just imagine, Satan says, let me have the phone. He's asking God, let me have the phone. Mm. How? Not possible. God says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He says, not just that. See, you don't understand. <laughs> You can be an iJod instrument and also be an Apple instrument. You have to choose one. Yes, once you are Android, you are not Apple. Yes, once, you are, once you are Android, you are not iOS. Once you are iOS, you are not Android. Yes, once you are Satan, you are not God. Once you are God, you are not Satan. What does that mean? No sickness can stay in my body. Why? My landlord is at home. <laughs> Where is my landlord, the Holy Ghost? Where is the landlord, the Holy Ghost? Where is the landlord, the Holy Ghost? Where is the land of the Holy Ghost? Hey, that love can't stay there any longer. Where is the land, land of the Holy Ghost? Today is very simple. We're just saying, landlord, do your job. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Let me ask you a question. Do you know there are some unoccupied lands that some pouts will stay and settle on? They will settle until the landlord comes. They can settle one year, two years. He doesn't mean the land is their own. The fact that the sickness has been your body for three years does not mean your body belongs to the sickness. He doesn't mean your womb is a home to fight, blood. He doesn't mean that deafness and pain can stay there. He doesn't mean that lupus can stay there. He doesn't mean that infirmity can stay there. He doesn't mean that cancer can stay there. Once the landlord shows up, ha -ha, hey, he begins to clear everything. Pack your Lord, get out. And leave, pack your Lord, get up and leave, pack your Lord, get up and leave. Shout hey, amen, somebody. Hey, when it's time for healing, you don't even have to wait for the pastor. Just say, Hey, I tried it. Pack your Lord, get up and leave. Two more, pack your Lord, get up and leave. Praise God. Please have your seats as we close. Let me just conclude with this. Numbers chapter 21. I love that slang. Pack your load. Get out and leave. Why? Landlord has come. Where is the land of the Holy Ghost? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Numbers chapter 21. All of you watching online, the same power is touching you. Oh, glory to God. Either you're in this auditorium or you're in any of the three or four overflows, it doesn't matter. The same power is touching you. Praise the Lord. Numbers chapter 21. These are our last. These are, oh, glory to God. Will you help me with this monitor? It's breaking a little. I am the Lord that he led there. You are the Lord that he led me. Just play. Numbers 21 verse 6. I want to see something. And as I conclude this, this might be the most important part. How do I really receive a miracle? In the book of Numbers, certain Israel had disobeyed. Certain snakes had gone into Israel and they were biting people. And as they beat people, they died. As they beat people, they died. Sometimes it's COVID that is biting people. Sometimes it's a sickness that is biting the family. As they beat people, they died. You know, as I'm preaching right now, the power of God is hitting people. I'm telling you, that there's a lady you have a certain growth but this growth is special it moves in your body it moves you are being healed right now you are being healed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus oh glory to God look at verse 7 therefore people came to Moses and said we have sinned against the Lord for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee he says he says pray that the Lord will take away the serpent from us and Moses prayed for the people guess what and the Lord said to Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, make thee an, a, a serpent made of, of brass. He said, And set it upon the pole. He didn't say, I will take away the serpent. He said, This is what I would rather do. He said, Take a serpent and set it upon the pole. See the next thing he said. This is very powerful. And he said to him, When you put it upon the pole, everyone that is beaten, everyone that is sick, 
what should they do let them look unto that serpent and they shall leave what was he saying if you keep looking at your body you will die if you keep saying hey, hey, hey he said you will die he said look at the serpent you will leave the serpent was a brazen serpent was artificial serpent on the pole you know why because that serpent was pointing to someone in the New Testament who was he pointing to that one day Jesus Christ will come and become a sin substitute and die for us and he hung on the cross and he said it is finished he said it is finished I've taken your sickness I've taken your disease it is finished it is finished it is finished it is finished I don't know what you came here with but it is finished I said it is finished I said it is finished glory to God he says look at what he says he says don't look at the body look at the serpent you know why let me give an example sometimes you'll tell people sometimes in the healing life what's wrong he says I have cancer you don't have cancer how I was diagnosed with cancer that, that, that's a better thing the reason why you say you have cancer is that you are looking at your body look at what God has done are you here? I said, my fallopian tube was blocked. Glory to God. I'm telling you, that's how you start talking. My fallopian tube was blocked. See, the major thing with healing is this. What are you looking at? Are you looking at your healing or you're looking at your sickness? Because what you look at is what you become. If I, they say, do what you cannot do. Some people say, that, mm, I'm careful because in their mind, I'm sick trying to do what I could not do. When we finish praying, when I say do what you cannot do, don't say, let me just, you, you will jump. The reason why is that there's no expectation of any sickness again. There's what? No expectation of any sickness. There's no residual of any sickness in my body. Thank you, Jesus. What does it say? It says, look and leave. What do you look at? What does it mean to look? You need to believe it. That Jesus has healed me already. You believe it. That Jesus has what? Has healed me already. So, in your mind, I'm healed. That's what you're looking at. In your mind, you want to look at your body? No, no, no. Look at the, look at the tree. Look at the pole. Look at it. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. When you know you're healed, let me let's finish it. Let's finish. I, I just want to finish the scripture so that we, so, so the Bible says this. Verse 29. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon the pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, is anybody here that a serpent has beaten you? Has passed you a sickness? The devil has beaten your health, has beaten your job, has beaten your marriage. He said, if anybody is beaten. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, when he beholds the serpent on the cross. What does he see? Listen to me. When you look at the cross, you see your sickness being put on the cross. You see your disease being put on the cross. He says, when he beholds the serpent on the cross, he lifts. All you have to do is to change what you believe. Don't say my asthma. Never. Don't look against asthma. Don't say my deafness. Never. Because he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. 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 By his stripes, you were healed. It doesn't matter if you came with a cane or a wheelchair. Either you came with blind or deaf. By his stripes, you were healed. Your, the decision of your healing is not today's decision. You hear what I said? Your healing decision is not today. Let me give an example. Have you ever applied for a British visa before? The day you got your passport was not the day we were giving visa. Yes or no? The day you got your passport is not the day we were giving visa. Your visa or no visa was determined before that time. Yes or no? The day you received your healing was not the day you were healed. You've been healed many years ago. All you have come today is to receive what has happened already. 
Glory to God. I said 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 glory to God. What do I tell you? Believe it. You need to believe it. You need to believe it. Believe it. Accept it. Accept it. Let me tell you something. If you're really sick, you need a miracle. Determine. I said today. You know, <laughs> you know, there was a testimony of, I mean, this happened a while ago. Someone got healed with a walking stick. I said, got healed. He now came back and said, ah, what about my walking stick? I said, what do you want to use it for? And you know why people say that? Just in case it comes back, see their faith and it will come back. The reason why is that the devil that made you sick has seen that made provision for walking stick. He will come back again. Glory to God. Have you not seen Buddha that are healed? They said, ah, I feel better, but don't let me testify now. Let me go and be sure. You will never be sure. Why? Because the devil doesn't want to be sure. He said, I, I felt the thing in my body, but I, I can't be sure right now. You, you know you had a tumor here. The tumor is not there again. He said, you want to be sure. How do you want to be sure? All those things are the things that open you up for the demon to come back. You will sleep, but the next morning, the thing is back. You know why? Because you were never sure you received. Faith is that I've not even seen it, yet I believe I've taken it. Talk less of when you have a material evidence in your body that is not. I say one recent miracle, you must determine that now I'm, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Not tomorrow, not next tomorrow, now. This hour, now. And once your mind is made up, nothing can stop you. And what do you do? You believe it. You believe it that right now is a sign. And when you believe it, as we begin to pray, either I'm praying because either I'm praying air mass into the atmosphere or I'm touching people, that is your moment of receiving. What do you do? Once we pray for you, you do what you could not do before. The reason why is that you tap the power of healing by faith. How do you demonstrate your faith? By doing what you could not do before. Some people say, um, they, so you pray for some people in Jesus, receive in Jesus, say amen. So, yeah. Oh, is that how you knew you were sick? You, you, you did some things that made you know you were sick. How do you know you are healed? You use your faith. You put your faith to work. How, how do you receive healing? By putting your faith to work. If the leg could not walk, you will move it. He said, yes, it's working, it's working, it's working. You Two things you do, you use your mouth and you use your body. Has, and you think, I'm healed. That's how you receive it. I'm healed. Don't just say I'm healed. Declare what you cannot do. My eyes can now see. My legs are now working. As you're saying this, you begin to move it. You begin to move it. As you're doing that, the power will begin to what, disseminate to your system. The power will disseminate to your system. You don't just stay there and say that. You know, someone said, you know, um, I don't want people to know I have a problem. You are not serious. It's people you came to look for. You will, you will be, you, you are not serious. Yeah, I don't want people to know. Nothing demonstrates your faith like action. Someone has a hearing problem in the left ear. You are being healed right now in Jesus' name. If you are that person, begin to check your ears, snap into your ears. You are being healed right now by the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, one, one of your eyes, it's twitching. It twitches, moves like it moves like that. Just one of your eyes, balls, moves like that. Right now it's being restored in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. How do you exercise your faith when you receive? Question, if you have received it, it will show. If you got an alert, we will know you got an alert. If you receive an alert in the street, it will show. How will it show? It will show in your thanksgiving. It will show in your confession. It will show in your action of faith. You begin to bend the back. You begin to open your eyes. Someone says, I tried it one time. It's not about trying. You're going to do it. You know why? You're going to do it until you can do it. That's the only way. Because faith insists. Someone says, eh, I, I tried two, three times. I mean, sometimes, I mean, the pastor, sometimes I'm praying for someone in the wheelchair. And when I'm praying for the person, you can see the difficulty in the person working. Then after two or three minutes, the person begins to walk better. He begins to walk better. And the re two reasons, number one, 
the more they exercise their body the more their faith dispenses the power into all the vital body parts but the second reason is this some part of that body has not been used in a long time and the muscles and the bones are stiff there was a time I prayed for someone and as I prayed I heard cry. the bone had been that stiff praise God 